This week, I thought it would be apt to point out just because the government is giving out money doesn't make it socialism. And that means all your memes are wrong. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. So there's this virus going around. You must have heard about it by now. It's called capitalism. It's caused us as a population to be extremely vulnerable to disease. It's produced millions of people who depend on handouts from rich people, jobs, they're called, just to survive. Those people who aren't allowed handouts might consequently not be allowed to see doctors. Because if a doctor has capitalism, they'll only treat you if you pay them enough. Most people won't have much relevant education because learning that's infected with capitalism is mostly just propaganda and obedience training. So instead of doing what they should, they panic and listen to misinformation. This virus has kicked millions of people out into the streets to live because housing tainted by capitalism means you're only allowed a home if you have money. And if you live in the street, or can't afford the best medical treatment, you're vulnerable to infection and liable to spread that infection to other people. But that wouldn't be your fault. You didn't design the system to exclude you. You just got sick. And then, out of nowhere, the unexpected happened. The government just offered you emergency money. Great, right? And I've been told that's socialism. I've heard that from right-wingers, liberals, social democrats, all in the past week. Money from the government is socialism. It's produced some confused social media posts and memes. Currently, the news has Americans, you know, the from the home of the brave, so scared and panicked they're buying huge amounts of toilet paper for some reason. And so Trump supporters have been taking this opportunity to say, this is what socialism looks like, even though it's happening under capitalism. In fact, if you look at what they've been saying since the first Red Scare about 100 years ago, everything they blame on socialism, all their warnings about socialism, are based on the effects of capitalism. They see people tossed into the street in their neighborhoods and say, yeah, but look at that socialist country. It happens there all the time. It's happening here right now. That's the best way to duck responsibility for anything. Those people are worse. They talk about Venezuela, a welfare capitalist state like all the others, and say, that's what socialism looks like. No, it isn't. It always amazes me the extent to which propaganda can make us see things that aren't there and miss things that are right in front of our faces. They also say, that's why we need to vote for Trump, because it's either Trump or socialism. Which is hilarious, because what they're calling socialism is happening now under Trump. I also find it funny because it looks like the alternative they're offering you to Trump is going to be Joe Biden. <laughs> and if you think Joe Biden is in any meaningful way different from Trump, you probably watch a lot of TV. Anyway, now they're talking about all the empty shelves that are a result of the most recent crisis of capitalism and corporate media interested in spreading panic and saying that's what socialism looks like. If you don't like this, you'll hate socialism. No, I hate capitalism because it's happening right now in a capitalist system. It's sleight of hand. Don't look right in front of you at the devastation around you, at your own problems and their causes. Look over there and think about how bad they have it. Then call it socialism. Then liberals come along, they're no better. They say, well, if you hate socialism, you must hate that Trump is handing out money. Haha, <laughs> gotcha! Except it's happening in a capitalist system. 
The past week has basically amounted to this. People who have no idea what they're talking about accusing each other of stuff. These people, I sympathize with them because I used to be one of them. If you've seen my series on the political compass, and political attitudes, you might remember I used to be on the bottom right, the libertarian right. I don't usually like to stereotype, but it seems to me everyone in the bottom right, maybe even everyone on the right, is ideologically committed to the idea that socialism is when government does stuff. They'll even make fun of you if you say what they're talking about isn't socialism because they've heard, they've, they've made so many straw man arguments about socialism, they just take it in stride now. Oh yeah, of course, that's not socialism. <laughs> socialism is what I say it is. It's just like when they get told they're not being, that, that they're being racist. <laughs> they say racist things all the time and get called out for it, but they don't care anymore. Right-wingers care about beliefs, not facts. And the people who make the propaganda they consume are well aware. And even liberals are making this argument that, that a small um, emergency tax refund in a capitalist system is socialism. Because they've never read any socialist theory. Some will tell you that you know, go read economics if you like socialism, because economics is full of straw man arguments against socialism, and they think that's enough to understand it. Some people write entire books attacking socialism and still don't know what it is, viz. Now, in case you're visually impaired, maybe I can describe what we're looking at. There's three books by three leading conservatives, in other words, loud, assertive, ignorant people promoted by Fox News as intellectuals. They are Donald Trump Jr., Dinesh D'Souza, and Janine Pirro. <laughs> they all write about the left and socialism as they define it, but they don't know what it means, so they get everything wrong. I'm sure the lowest common denominator will love their work. Socialism means worker ownership or widespread common ownership of the means of production. Some people would say the means should thereby be owned by the state, but then if the state owns it, the workers don't own it. So I personally, and I, I this, this is just a lot of disagreement on the left, but I personally would not call places like the USSR socialist for that reason. Try not to focus on so-called socialist countries, since whatever you're bent, no country or state could really be fully called fully socialist. Socialism means worker self-management and horizontally organized workplaces, and sharing the bounty of production with everyone. Capitalism means private ownership of the means of production, which inevitably means the formation of an owning class, a capitalist class, that makes all the most important decisions in society. Socialism, and communism in particular, would work to eliminate class society by abolishing private ownership. Therefore, socialism and capitalism are incompatible. People who say we have mixed socialist and capitalist systems do not realize we have a capitalist system with welfare thrown in to offset the worst excesses of capitalism. Welfare is not socialism. It's a bribe, so you don't revolt against the people who have all the money and power. The state doesn't tax us in order to fund services. It creates services so it can continue to rule us. It protects the wealth of the rich 
So the huge amounts of resources they control could be released to the rest of us to help solve or ease our problems. But they aren't. People die every day of preventable diseases under capitalism. Maybe just because they're poor. Maybe just because thanks to intellectual property, the price of medicine they need is through the roof. Insulin used to be free. Now some people have to choose between taking insulin and eating. And the only solution right-wingers ever offer is go get another job. Every day people suffer and die, and every day rich people could do something about it and choose not to. In fact, they make it worse. Take a look at this. It's a tweet that says a U.S. pharma company called Gilead is in court trying to prevent China from getting a potential COVID-19 vaccine that they developed because they're worried China might distribute it to everybody for free. A big corporation uses its considerable resources to make a vaccine that would solve one of our problems, but because of capitalism, access is restricted. So anyone who can't pay is at risk, and that means they might spread it to others. But as long as some people make money, that's what matters, right? Also during this time, if you don't already know how, learn to read between the lines of everything the rich and powerful do. All ruling classes will take advantage of a crisis to gain even more wealth and power. They might sneak special projects into emergency funding bills, or just hand out money to rich people and say it's to stabilize the economy, or some other innocuous sounding metaphor. Because, as we're all supposed to believe, the government can prevent crashes of the capitalist system and smooth out corrections if it just gives more money to the rich. Even though capitalism experiences crashes and crises every five years or so. One way or another, you will end up with less money and less freedom as a result of whatever is happening now and over the next few months. Read Naomi Klein's The Shock Doctrine, if you're new to this idea. This past week, we've seen capitalist governments hand out trillions of dollars, you know, to banks, like they always do in a crisis. But this time, they're contemplating kicking a couple of bucks in emergency money over to some of the millions of us lower down who are affected by the pandemic. Does a system where a few thousand people own all the capital suddenly becomes socialist when the government is giving out money? Does a lion become a bear when it stands on its hind legs? Would you ever confuse the two? Well, you might. Our beliefs can make us blind to what's right in front of our eyes. On the one hand, it's okay to make fun of right-wingers who've been saying the same mindless tropes about socialism, but who this time are accepting government handouts without compunction. Of course, their behavior is hypocritical. On the other, we shouldn't obscure the goals of socialism by going along with them. This is an opportunity to educate people about what socialism or related ideas would actually mean. Socialism is possible and desirable. An economy reoriented to pro-social goals would make all these emergency measures unnecessary. Everyone would have access to hospitals, regardless of whether a boss thought they were worthy of getting paid. Everyone would have a place to live, so they wouldn't have to huddle together on the street. We wouldn't fill up prisons for the purpose of social control or to farm out to corporations for slave labor. So we wouldn't have thousands of people crammed in together in unhygienic spaces. Vulnerable people would be treated with the same respect and care as everyone else. So we would make things accessible for them and easy to the best of our ability. 
If people's jobs are affected by a pandemic, it doesn't matter, because their needs would already be taken care of. And they wouldn't be so stressed about losing their livelihoods, they become anxious or depressed or turn to theft or violence. Wouldn't that be a better place to live? Vaccinated against this virus called capitalism?